see from people. These are some brand new drums that just came out from the chrome, chrome plating. And after they come out, we send them out to the platers looking like this, or maybe like the one on the table. We send it out after we did, do all the work from, <clears throat> from this stage, we bring it a little bit more advanced to that stage. You see what I'm saying? We bring it from mm -hmm. this to that, and then we send it out to the plater, and it come back from the plater looking like this. And then we gotta start the process to tune them back now, because when it comes from the plater, the song is gone. Just raising the pitch of the fundamental. Glenn's room is one of the main builders. This young man here, he's not here now, works on the table here. He's the only young man that I've worked with for 50 years that can build the drums as I can build it, all the drums. Carlin room and I see Carlin and she builds and she tunes and she, she also have a machine here that she does a tune and read. Right now it's not nothing yet. She is the best builder of all when it comes to one drum. She builds the best, she built for all the professionals like Andy Norell, Robert Greenage, Bugsy Sharp, Ray Hallman, all the top recording artists of this country. Here in the back here, this room we do most of the heavy work. All the air tool work, all the hoses you see around. All these things work by compressors and from on top of the roof. From on top of the roof has compressors where we will kick on the compressors and we will hook up the, the air lines and all, all the gun will actually hook up the line, the different places that hook up the line all around the building. And these line goes into the compressor and then they will use the guns the kind of the jack hammer instead of long time in Trinidad you beat your hammer bam 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 you know mm -hmm. now the airflow comes from on top of the building it could be working there or here or there wherever with these guns and have a pedal to regulate the airflow you know like here whatever comes from the building it comes through the pedal like a, like a like a car like a car pedal mm -hmm. you understand and you could hit the pedal to any extent and the airflow is in the line and then you control the air from here like that. So you could get this plunger going like that. You know, so when the air comes through the building, you do like that, and it goes rapidly like a thousand blows a minute instead of you have to take a hammer and beat the drum down. Time after time. And then after this is done, we have different heads. We'll put into the gun like these, like these flatter heads, goes into the gun, and the gun now, with the same kind of a gun, mm -hmm. sometimes these guns, these here, yeah, this will go in here, you understand? Yeah. And you'll plug the air tool in here, and then you'll pass it over the drum like this and smoothen it out. Mm -hmm. Because right now, you could see, after using that dimple, you can see a bunch of dimples in here. You know what I mean when I say dimple, little, little, like where the machine hit, it, like that. And then these things here now, the guy will, will level it up, smoothen it up a lot more. And then they will use the same kind of a gun like this, all these different guns here. And they'll put the bit in, like that, put the air, like that. And the groove lines, long ago we will cut all the lines by hand. Long ago... Long ago, all these, all these lines were done by hand, you know what I'm saying? Like you see that, you know? If you look at this carefully, you could find it's very erratic, look. You see like a, a bunch of, uh, like that. Yeah. But this is done by hand. You know, you can see the groove like a little welding. Mm -hmm. And that's a hand work. But now, with the machine that goes so fast, you don't see, I have one in my room, I should show you, I'll show you. It goes so fast that, that you don't see this anymore. 
Mm. Your machine does the job 100%. So all it do is to plug the air and like, like, a, like a, re a revolver, like a trigger, like that, you know? And they'll put it there and do like that. Like that, you know what I mean? Yeah. So it goes so much faster and so much smoother. Right. Instead of you just knock, pop, 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 day in and day out. You will never be able to do it by hand as fast and as good as that would do it. So all these air tools here, and the guys have a whole bunch of them all over the place. Everybody uses the air tool except me. <laughs> you still use your hands. Huh? I still use my hands. <laughs> and they had to train me how to do it now. That's right, I trained them. They, now this morning I was asking, how do you use these tools? Because I can't even use the tools anymore. So the guys work better than me. When I say, it's practically more, mm -hmm. better. Because I, you know, I know the job, but for me to do it as well, I've got to practice a lot. And by practicing, your hand get back into it. Mm -hmm. I ain't got no time to practice, so mm -hmm. <laughs> they do the job for me now. <laughs> so these are the air tools that they use. So these are brand new bottles that just came from, and you see they have nothing in them. They're brand new. And the truck would roll in here, bring 50 or 100 at one time. And that's why I say we don't have to suffer for drum like in Trinidad, pick up any kind of old drum. <laughs> Everything is brand new drum. And these boots here, these boots here are from the university, the acoustic boots they call them, where the students are going and play piano or violin or nobody, and not piano or violin, and <coughs> somebody wants to have something inside of a boot and nobody, they don't want to be disturbed. Mm -hmm. These boots, you see for maximum noises. Uh, so you can close that, I'll be a plug for that. When you decide a day working or doing whatever, I can't hear you from outside. Uh, all these are pieces that drum has to be worked on. And this is what they call a little engine room. And they have all the presses and the chop saws and the drilling machines and the uh, whatever your benders and grinders and whatever in here. Like cutting pipe to make stands and going in the chop saw. These are power tools, you know. And this is more or less the workshop in a nutshell. And when all the kids are in here, you could hear a whole lot of noise going on. <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah like, like the hammer's out of hell. Like a resonator. Right. And you, you control it by these things. See this kind of little tube in at the bottom? Yeah. I control a lot of the song with that. Oh, that's interesting. Because mm -hmm. I, I haven't seen this on some of the other ones. Because no, they, none of them have it. Yeah. Because it's a special instrument I build. Like I call it a limited edition. I build it for far and few in between. Uh, Andy Norell, one of the professional, really early. I want a guitar like your best guitar, this the limited edition quality. Mm -hmm. So I said, okay, I'm going to build it totally from scratch. I don't want anybody to touch it. None of my students will build it then. I do the whole thing. Like this year, nobody touched it. I beat it down, I cut it out, I prepare it, I fire it, I do all the tuning. And as a result, for me, mentally, I behave as I go, you know.